Multitasking. Multitasking is not an option these days. <laughs> so Paul says, I appeal to Judea and Syndike to agree in the Lord. Yes, I say also to you, true companion, help them. They have struggled together in the gospel ministry along with me and Clement and my other co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. rejoice. Let everyone see your gentleness. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, tell your requests to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if something is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And what you learned and received and heard and saw in me, do these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. So here we are, people of God. We are talking, we are talking, Paul is giving some practical advice to, to a congregation uh, in Philippi. He's in prison in Ephesus, and he gives some practical, some practical advice because word has reached him. There's a disagreement. There's a disagreement in the congregation. And so Paul says, all right, let's, you know, Eudia, Euodia, and Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I say also to you, true companion, help them. They have struggled together in the gospel ministry. So here we have, there's obviously a difference. Paul doesn't share what is going on in the life of the congregation. Um, what is clear is that right from the beginning, not everybody was 100% on, on board with all of the issues. So this is in the life of the church in the first century, in the earliest congregations, um, they are, they, there are disagreements. And he says, all right, so if, can we try to agree in the Lord? And then he encourages other people who will be hearing this letter, you help them. You help them in, in, their, in this quest for unity. So you help them because they have all struggled together. And, you know, along with Clement and many other co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Uh, this, is a, this is a very interesting concept, the book of life. Um, it appears in the Psalms. It appears throughout the Old Testament. It appears in the gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to Luke. And it appears here, the book of life. You know, it's sort of like you're registered. You've been registered in the book of life and people of God. That is the promise that has been made. And it's a promise that we all have. Our names have been put in the book of life. So perhaps this is where the imagery of St. Peter standing before the pearly gates and checking when we stand there to see if we get into heaven, he's looking into the book of life to see if your name is in there. So there's that. Maybe that's where that all came from. I don't know. But that's the book of life. I always like this, this concept that God keeps a book. And since I'm surrounded by books and we all have books, it's nice to know that God has a book too. Uh, and it's probably several of them. And this book is sort of like a directory and our names are in there. And so this is sort of a comfort, a comfort there. And what Paul is saying is that everybody, everybody who's a part of this, this church, everybody who is in this community, of God, that name is in that book, you know, and there's the, you're, you're registered in this book, and God knows it. So, what does God read before God goes to sleep at night? I don't know. Perhaps <laughs> God doesn't go to sleep, but if God has nothing to do, he might read the book of life to check who's there. So, there we are. It's a promise. It's a promise, and what it is, and what he's saying is he's offering up this, this hope, this concept that all our names are in the book of life. There's a higher calling, and so when we disagree with each other, and apparently there was this disagreement, Paul doesn't share with us what disagreement, what, this, what is happening there, but he says, look, you know, we, are, we have a higher calling, so let's see if we can reach some form of agreement. Let's see if we can reach some form of agreement, um, and let's have that unity. And so it's, it's an amazing comfort. It's an amazing comfort uh, to see that the church had disagreements. They had to work on it, just like we do. I know St. Luke is different. But my hunch is that there may be have, there's occasionally disagreements. How do we work this out? So how do we work it out in the 21st century? Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> well, one of the things we can do is we can try to listen to each other 
and hear what the concern is. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes that's not clear. Yeah, to hear no. their concerns, to listen, to listen mm -hmm. to, you know, to listen. Yeah, that's an art. <laughs> that's a talent. <laughs> And when you've been together like Jeffrey and I for 38 years, all of a, there's this reminder, are you listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> are you listening to me? Did you hear me? And then you get the, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> and then our, our, my, my, my fears are like, I told you that, I told you that. And he says, I guess you want me to write down every word you say. And the answer is, of course I do. You know, come on. But yeah, and Liz, when you were praying, when you were praying that you have a board meeting tonight and you were praying for the comfort, the peace, the courage and that. And my heart goes out to you because uh, Jeffrey serves on the board, on the board in, in our uh, townhouse community. And oh yeah, <laughs> there are days, there are days when it's like, you know, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, and Halloween decorations become an issue. Mm. What you can put, what you can put up, when you, and all of this, it's, it's so fun, much fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> And then we have the vigilantes. Oh dear. So yeah. So you we pray. You know the vigilantes who go around and say, you know point out the the um, you put orange lights up and we're only allowed white lights. You know those. <laughs> sorts of hey look. Hey look. You know. Hey look. You know. Uh, it's important. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I'm be a I remember in our congregation that I served, the tradition on Christmas Eve was to have live trees. The, the front area was rather large. There were live trees, there were four. And the tradition was to put in blue lights. Remember those old hot, those lights that we had when we were kids and you'd screw them in and they just got really hot. And you knew, you know, and it was always like, this tree could really go up at any moment sometimes. <laughs> These things got so hot. They were always blue. And new pastor arrived and decided, oh, well, let's put in multicolor lights. And new pastor hadn't conferred with the uh, people of God as to <laughs> what was supposed to be there. And this <laughs> tradition of blue, blue lights, they came in to receive with multicolored lights. And um, there was this outcry, rather loud, of, you know, what do you think this is? Kreskis or <laughs> <laughs> And it was like, so, so oh. the next year, all of the lights returned to blue and mm -hmm. there was peace because you know, on Christmas Eve, that was what the lights looked like on the Christmas trees. So yeah, disagreements, disagreements and learning how to listen. And uh, yeah, it's a fact of life, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But then what Paul says here, he says in verse five, let everyone see your gentleness. And I think there's, there's the whole point of this. You know, as I keep saying, as we were looking in the book of Philippians, we're being watched. People watch us, you know, to yeah. see how we live out our life, how we live out our testimony, our testimony. So, you know, Paul says, let everyone see your gentleness. So maybe there will be disagreements. You know, Lutherans are famous for disagreements. We agree to disagree. That's been actually, that's been a key, a key slogan in our, our history. We agree to disagree. And we realize this is not, this is not, uh, this is not essential. And this might be a practice or something. So we will agree to disagree. All right. So that's a, a Lutheran, a Lutheran principle. We can agree to disagree. And we'll live with each other's disagreements and we will respect each other for certain, dis for certain disagreements. And okay, that's how we do this. Let everyone see your gentleness. You know, and that's really important. That is so important. And that's what Paul is getting across to his congregation that he loves. People are watching. People are watching. And then he says, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then... He gives you, us a recipe. This, the verses between eight and nine give us a recipe. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if something is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And what you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, do these things as the God of peace will be with you. So here we are. It's a very interesting concept here because this goes against, this goes, this is an off, a recipe for, for meditation. Um, we, we, we have oftentimes, in, we absorb certain forms of meditation which say, let your mind go blank and empty out and, and release and, you know, breathe in the good, breathe out the bad and get to a state of, of calm tranquility. That's great. That's great. That's not, that's not what, what's, but you know, that's fine. And then Paul says, but here's another way of meditating. Whatever is true or whatever is true, respect, worthy of respect, just, pure, lovely, whatever is commendable. If something is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. And mm -hmm. so again, Paul is shifting this, shifting this. And he says, look at the positive. You know, the cup is half full. You know, think of the positive. So who, who, who is true? Who is worthy of respect? Who is just? Who is pure? Who is lovely? Who is commendable? And it's God. Mm -hmm. so Paul, is, Paul is turning to the congregation that has some disagreements in it. And he says, well, work on it. Work it out. You know, everyone, you know, work it out. Let everyone see your gentleness. And then when you want to, want to enhance your walk, enhance your understanding, think on certain positive things. Think on the true, the just, what is worthy of respect, what is worthy of respect, what is excellent and praiseworthy, what is commendable. And so it pulls us back. He's giving us a recipe in the 21st century. When we, we get come together, let's look at, the, let's look at the, the good things. Let's focus on the good, you know? And, you know, uh, that's, that's a good piece of advice that Paul gave to Philippi and can give to us. Let's look at, let's look at the positive yes. things. Let's look at, let's look at things a little differently. And as I said last week, we're a, we're a heavenly colony. We're a colony of heaven on earth. You know, we are a heavenly colony uh, on earth. And so what do we do? Well, we're, we can be heaven-minded. Now, we're not to be too heaven-minded so that we're no earthly good, but <laughs> we, allow, we allow heaven heaven, heaven, and God's perspective to add a new perspective to our, to our vision, our understanding. And if there's ever, ever anything, you know, uh, there was, how does this, the, the expression there is, you know, in the light of eternity, in the light of eternity, well, you know, what's important sometimes? You know, it's sort of like when I try to get my students to think, to think, you know, it's like, okay, analysis, let's analyze and you get into the weeds. And then I always try to say, okay, now get to 30,000 feet and look at it from a different perspective. Because That's sometimes true. as it's too human for us, human, we see that we can't see the forest because of the trees. And mm -hmm. we get in there and we get into the trees, we get into the analysis. And then it's like, okay, get to 30,000 feet and look at it from a different perspective and see it from a different angle. And then sometimes when you're at 30,000 feet, you get to see how God sees things. You know, at 30,000 feet, the world looks quite different. You know, it looks quite different. I mean, look today, I put the, the computer on the altar and you were looking back at the baptismal font. You saw a different end of the church, you know? Normally, you, you normally look at the altar. I don't, I don't see, I see some of that. What I often see is the creation window that is above the baptismal font, because that's the way, where I'm looking, and it's like, oh, that's very peaceful, very restful, lots of greens and blues and purples, and it's very, very rich, very rich, and so it's very, very neat. So it's perspective. So with that in mind, let's pause for a second and see where we're at. Hold on, don't say anything yet. Who are in heaven? Hallowed be, be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us give, us in heaven. give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us lead not, to not into temptation, but deliver us from, from, evil. Us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, power and the glory forever and ever. And forever. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Thank you, people of God, for inviting me to your computer screens and for joining me today. Uh, it was great.